Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to a sponsored video this time around. The nice folks from Shaper3D asked me if I would be so kind and create a video for them about a product that I did with Shaper3D and uh, that's not really hard because I really like Shaper3D and I actually use it quite quite a lot. It is a CAD application almost the one like ones that you have on a PC like there's uh, Fusion 360 or if you had SOLIDWORKS or Inventor or one of these uh, other CAD applications. So it's perfect for that. And I decided since I like sci-fi and I like furniture as well, let me do some sort of sci-fi furniture for maybe a spaceship or some sort of space station. So let's get started with the video. Before getting into this video, I want to show you the early sketches that I did here. So I started out with uh, ideating, so doing all sorts of ideas from couches. I wanted, I knew that I wanted to do some sort of sci-fi furniture and going through couches, I, I like, I like sofas a lot, but I was about what's in front, front of a couch or a sofa and it's a coffee table. So this is sort of the, the coffee table idea that I ended up with. Uh, I wanted it to be like sideways pushable and I, and I came up with like, um, mechanism for that to, to push and then I got straight into modeling which I will show you now let's start off Shaper 3D and that was this earliest version so let me center this a little bit as you can see double tap this and I'm going to move it here and then push it out of the way so this is how it should be I actually didn't do the mechanism here because I decided I don't like this um, design that much, especially, so specifically because of this sliding mechanism. Because if this slides here, I'm going to need a lot of space here. And if this slides, oh, let me deselect this. This will slide obviously the other way. So I just like, this, this takes up like triple the space that I wanted it to. So let me slide these back. But yeah, I'm gonna actually slide this this way now as you can see i was thinking about okay how can i put it together and i quickly was okay there has to be a, a nicer solution than this uh, so i started doing new sketches i also wanted to go towards maybe a different no not that much different direction but this is where i started then i was like okay i want to make it a bit more uh, rounded because it is supposed to be something that's on on a, on a spaceship well it's maybe on a space station so i want a bit more rugged rounded and let's just keep the mechanism also a little bit more simpler especially if if if, if you're designing for ruggedness you want the mechanism to be simple as well and then i sort of ended up with uh, this drawing in the end which i sort of liked and from here on i started designing now i did this actually <laughs> two times already and now i'm going into the third time so what are we going to do i know the measurements so the measurements are let me so it is 90 long 60 wide 25 high and 15 from the ground and with that let's jump straight into modeling i create a square which i simply extrude up this is the right front quarter of the desk that i'm modeling then i'm applying chamfers an eight one on the bottom and the rest will be a three chamfer uh, what i do next is i'm going to lift this body 15 centimeters because i want it to be 15 centimeters from the ground and i chop off the uh, top of it so i want it in two parts i want to have the top and the bottom part and for this i drew uh, a simple square there as well and before i cut through it i double the body so i can reuse it and then when i do the chopping off i basically use intersect because then i remain with a nice top part uh, i pull the body back and then i can simply really cut off the top part at this point from here on i'm going to uh, name the front sketch as well front sketch because i'm going to use it a lot so i want to find it more easily then i'm going to drill the well not drill the holes just create the sockets where the holes will come in later on so i can attach the top part of the desk to uh, the bottom part and for this i'm also going to make sure to uh, think about how this is buildable and in this case well first of all i'm, I'm going to extrude it down uh, four centimeters but then you see that I'm going to have these quite sharp edges uh, in the corners and that you can't really get in reality with any sort of uh, drill. Uh, so I'm going to give it a fillet of four 
and with that i think i'm also going to give a fillet on the outside of two uh, just so it's it's a little bit nicer and it's not as sharp and cutty then i do the same thing i'm going to need to attach the handle to the body so i'm going to cut into the part where the into the well the side of the part as you can see for that i'm projecting some of the measurements so i can make sure that it is going to stay exactly in the middle and it's nicely centered uh, once i have this drawing done i simply cut into the well i extrude into the face and i use the same thing i make sure that the inside has a chamfer and I also give a small chamfer to the outside now I can draw the holes and place them as I would like them to be on the drawing. Which in this case means I want them to be two, two, two centimeters from each side and one centimeter from the bottom. And these measurements I will remember for when I'm doing the handle as well. I'm cutting three centimeters in because I want to have two one centimeter buffers in between the slot where the handle will come in. Then I move on to mirroring the body that I just created once to the left and then I take both parts and I mirror again to the back. Once uh, the mirroring is done, I'm going to unite these into again the bottom part of the body. After that, I'm going to apply a shell for which I give a three centimeter thickness in this case. Next step is to drill the holes that will combine the top part and the bottom part of this table. The extrusion will go four centimeters deep because I want the top part of the table to be one centimeter thick. So once that's done, I'm going to select on the top part and I'm going to mirror it four times and I'm going to unite these bodies into one body. Returning to these holes I just created, I am going to draw two more holes on the other side and I'm not going to drill down. Instead, I'm going to create a construction plane which I push to the middle of this body so I can use it for mirroring. And this is quite a good uh, method to keep in mind because you will probably have to use this quite often. It, it just speeds up progress. So after I'm done mirroring uh, all these holes, I can go back to my body and just select them and extrude through them, all of them, this time just three centimeters uh, deep because the one centimeter added was together with the top part of the table. Then I can hide the construction plane and put the lid back on. Now I want a space where my hand can go in and pull out the top part of the table. For that I cut one centimeter into the bottom and this one centimeter I will somewhat fill with the top part of the table. So you will see me now draw in the space that I just cut out and this I will extrude into the top part of the table. Uh, what I forgot to do here is give a shell to the top part. So once I'm done with uh, this drawing, I'm going to turn it around and give it a one centimeter thickness shell. Uh, once that is done, I'm ready to cut out the middle, which will be the actual lid part, which can slide. But uh, first I duplicate this top part so I don't lose anything. Once the cutting is done, I have all three parts in this case and uh, the middle part I can start modeling the handle area back in, well, the, the handle that I just cut out from the bottom part. Then I unite these bodies and now I can start working on the two sides. And this is where you can start talking about how realistic you want this build to be actually. And obviously I want to give it at least a feel of realism even if it is sort of a sci-fi table that I wouldn't have to go super realistic with it. Uh, the idea here is that I really don't want the lid to slide back and forth just on pure air. So I want there to be at least some sort of uh, remnant of uh, mechanism. And that's what I'm going to create now. Basically, I'm just going to work on, on the right side of the top, even though there's two sides, I'm just going to work on the right side because later on I can simply uh, mirror that. And what I'm going to create is a ledge that goes from the back to the front in this right side and I'm going to create sort of a groove in there in which the top of the lid or basically the lid itself can slide back and forth. For that later on you will see me create a T-shape uh, onto the lid upside down hanging and that T-shape is going to fit perfectly 
into this groove that I'm creating here. As you can see, I just created the hole through which the T-shape, if it's if you imagine it upside down, it should fit in there and wiggle. What I like to do is I always give, uh, in this case, I gave one millimeter of playroom because you always need, need this if you don't want your mechanism to really just <laughs> grind to a halt. And then I just use the, the body itself to cut up parts of this uh, groove to make it a little bit sexier. After getting distracted and doing the small entry hook for the fingers, which can pull the lid in and out, I actually start creating this T-shape that I was talking about, this upside down T-shape. And to make it a little bit easier for myself, I will just use the same sketching surface where I created the groove before. And from there, I can pull it out and uh, create this T-shape. And then this T-shape can be just simply unified with the body of the lid itself. I'm not going to talk over this because it's quite clear. So I'll let you enjoy this for a while and I return with commentary as soon as I'm on to the next step. Something worth mentioning is that I use the same construction plane to mirror the T-shaped body as well onto the bottom side of the lid. After that, I move on to the top part of the desk, which is not the lid, and I just create some sci-fi looking shapes in it. There's uh, really not a, a, a lot of uh, strategy in here. It's just really here is doing a little bit of art and just doing something that you find is aesthetically pleasing uh, and cut into it. Uh, it's also an interesting decision if you want to keep it uh, sharp or if you want to give it a little bit of fillet or a, a, maybe a chamfer. After I'm done with the shape, I'm simply going to mirror this part of the top as well through the construction plane that I created earlier. As I said, this construction plane is going to come in handy quite often. And once that is done, uh, I just unite the back part. So I just create a small little surface that I can extrude from one end to the other. Once this is united, I turn my attention to the sliding part because that also, I felt it needed some sort of well, decoration to it since the other two parts have something and I use uh, the same measurement. So I go two millimeters deep and I give it a full millimeter uh, fillet on each side. Once I'm done with the top of the table, I turn my attention to the front of it where I use offset to create sort of uh, decoration as well. But it's basically the same step, so I'm just gonna cut over this. Now we come to the, well, not the bigger part, but the interesting part for me of, of the modeling because we are going to need this handle shape which uh, as you could saw in the uh, drawing is quite interesting because it has several bends in it. So it is sort of bends in 3D space. And how do you do that? Well, I like to create a, a helping shape, a helping body for this. And on top of that body, I'm going to draw the, well, the axis of the um, handle because for the, the handle is going to be round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the swipe tool later on. But first for that, I'm going to create the axis on which I can swipe circle. So for this on, as, as you can see, I created this sort of bent uh, body, which goes with the same lines as my main uh, table body. And on one top, uh, I created half of the, well, not half, uh, basically quarter of it. And now on the bottom part, I'm uh, creating the other quarter. And these, I also give them a little bit of bend at each edge because 
you can't really bend uh, metal that nicely. And I forgot the one in the middle, so that's a, that's a nick, sort of, that doesn't happen. Uh, I also create another construction plane because I know I will have to mirror again. Uh, now I'm sort of done with all the axes that I will want to follow, so I'm going to create the circle. And that circle I'm going to, with, with sweep, I'm going to run through these uh, axes that I can create. It. So you can see that I'll select the circle and with sweep, I just simply select each and every part of the axis. And that gives me this really nice 3D shape. Uh, once again, that nick in the middle, I should have fixed that. Now, how am, am I going to create this? Well, in reality, I would probably weld as nicely as possible uh, a piece of metal to this uh, bar, handlebar. And then that piece of metal can be inserted into the slot that I create. Well, I didn't create yet, but into the slot that it will I will create with it. So once this little metal part is in, I just... Uh, extrude it four centimeters and with the help of it i'm going to cut it out from the the main body of the table but uh, before we get to that uh, obviously i have to unite this piece with the handle that i created and now that i have this half of the handle i can use the construction plane to mirror it and then have a full handle. I'm going to duplicate this full handle because obviously I want to use it to cut. So I want to have a, a non-damaged uh, version and I'm going to mirror it again to the other side of the table. And then I'm simply going to sub subtract these two handle parts from the table itself. And when that is done, the handles disappear. I can reattach the handle where it belongs and then I can create the holes on the handle. So basically just looking where the holes were on the table or where the holes are on the table and create the same holes onto this uh, metal that I welded onto the handle as well because that's where my screws are going to go through. And once that is done, it's again time. Well, I'm going to uh, extrude through both sides because now I can extrude quite long and I have the other side of the handle but then I just use the construction plane again to mirror the handles onto both sides and once this is done basically most of the work here is done so I can give names to all my bodies because they won't really change anymore that much and then it's time to go on and creating uh, the screws and so this is a little bit of nitpicky you don't really have to do screws but I thought hey it's fun let me just do some very quick very rough screws obviously these are not uh, correct uh, usually you can download screws from, uh, if, if you're working in industrial design, there are libraries where you can download correct screws, but let's say this is futuristic screws, so I just wanted to have one. Once I'm done with the modeling, I just leave one and I use the translate tool to move it and copying it from place to place. And this is basically the same as before. Once I have two screws done for the two holes on one corner, I can use one of the construction sides to mirror these to the other corner. And then I can take all four screws and use the other construction plane to mirror all four screws to the last corner. I'll use the same process for fitting the screws into the holes in the front and the back of the table as well, basically uniting the handles with the table's body itself, mirroring and copying. And after I'm done screwing around, I can move on and do the final piece, which is coloring in this case. And actually, I like the, the white a bit more now that I look at it than the gray that I ended up with, but you can always change and readjust that put it into a rendering engine and have a really nice table. So that's it for uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot and definitely give Shaper 3D a try because it is a fun and really good little program for on the go. But yeah, subscribe if you would like more content like this, leave a like, uh, but most importantly, wish you guys a great week and see you folks next time. Bye bye.